you now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, friends, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh my, I don't know when I've been so excited about a program, and Jack too, because the topic that we have today is so very, very near to our hearts. It has to do with Israel. Now, we're scooting this celebration up according to the Israeli calendar, because they're celebrating their 70th anniversary, and we want to join them on this great celebration because Israel is so dear to our hearts and you feel that way too, don't you? Yeah, Jack? we're doing it in America May 14th, but in Israel April 19th because that's what their calendar is. And oh, I love the Jew. And I hate the Hitlers and Mussolinis and all the crowd that hated the Jews. And I can't stand you Christians to say I don't like the Jews. What kind of a Christian are you? God loves the Jew. You're going to hear the greatest love story you've ever heard today about the love of God, the Father for the Jew. And I love him as much as my goodness. And in a few minutes from now, you're going to be overwhelmed. And I'm going to pray that you Christians and even you Palestinians and the rest of that crowd start respecting the Jew because of what your Christian Holy Bible says. You're not obeying it. I'm going to let you have it today. All right, but before we get into all of this, I'd like for you to take just a one-minute time with us right now to go to the Holy Land. Jack and I have been in the Holy Land ten times, and, oh, I loved it so very, very much. The opportunity of interviewing some of the Knesset members and those in authority there and the first ambassador to the United Nations, it was such a blessing. And, but I just want you to see a clip right now of how happy they really are in Israel. As I said, well, we've been in Israel ten times, and something that I really noticed there was the happiness that they have. In fact, this year they were voted uh, one of the happiest countries in the world. They were number 11 in the world. The United States was number 18 in the world. Well, thank the Lord that they were so happy. And I'm going to ask Jack a very important question. Is this happiness and joy going to continue in Israel, Jack? Yes, I feel it will, especially once these prophecies are completely fulfilled because it, it will be the most glorious time Israel has ever known. But, Rexella, uh, next week yes. we're going to be speaking about the diaspora. For 2,000 years, the worldly crowd, the anti-Semites, the religions that hate the Jew persecuted them. Hitler killed six million and Stalin butchers. And then we've got ISIS and all this crowd hating the Jews. But who's behind it all? First Chronicles 21.1 Satan, the old slimy devil stood against Israel, stood against the Jews. So next week 
your heart will bleed as you see what these people have suffered. But after 2,000 years, they came home. No wonder they're happy now. It's a joy unspeakable and full of glory. We're going to get to that in a moment. All right, Jack, you know, there's something that's very, very important. I said we're celebrating their 70th anniversary about a month ahead of time. And uh, I guess we could give this program a title, Celebration of Israel's 70th Birthday, including the final two signs proving the imminent return of Christ. Jack, Israel is connected what's happening in Israel with the return of Jesus, right? Oh, Rexella, the blessed Holy Spirit of God wrote the entire Bible. And I'm going to shock you Jewish people how God loves you. It says that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Do you know there are 66 books in this Bible and 64 were written by Jews? Ah, yeah. Only two not written by Jews, yeah. Luke, a Greek. And he wrote Luke after his name and the book of Acts. Everything else was by Jews. Well, how can that be? Because 11 of the 12 apostles were Jews who accepted the message of Christ and were classified as Christians. But God loves Jews, as you're going to hear in a few moments. And we... I'd be thankful for this book. It's not the King James Version or the Douay Version of the Catholic Church. It's the Jewish Version. Hallelujah from cover to cover, except two books. Amen. You know, friends, when I said that Israel was voted the, one of the happiest countries in the world, I kind of wondered how can they be so happy with everything going on in the world. And there are so many uh, headlines that I've been reading lately about what these people have to face, and yet they're happy. They're facing a new anti-Israel axis is forming. Now, that's an analysis from one of the headlines. Mm -hmm. The United Nations pushing for $65 million to teach Palestinians to fight Israel. God help us. Israelis warned against traveling. Where? They're warned, don't travel in these countries, Turkey, Egypt, and Jordan. Al-Qaeda calls on Muslims to rise and attack Jews and Americans, yes. Worries of war between Israel and Iran increase, and they say that ultimately that will drag in the United States and Russia. The United States and Russia, keep that in your mind, if you will. Khomeini, Israel should be forced to retreat to the point of demise. In other words, they should be destroyed, absolutely out of the picture. Where will America always stand? Where will America be for Israel? Well, our vice president answered that. America stands with Israel always, always. Amen. Thank you, America. Yes. And that is warns of growing threats from Russia in China. I'm going to be referring oh, to that in a moment. Oh, you better believe it. Empowered president of China says ready to fight bloody battle. And Israel begins nationwide emergency preparedness exercises. We're, they're going to be prepared for whatever comes their way, friends. And here's a last one I want to share with you. The state of Israel is here to Day. Amen. They are confident. I'll give you an that. everlasting name, Israel. Jehovah God said. Now, you know, I said I'd be referring to Russia and China. Jack, the first message I ever heard you preach, in fact, he came to our church. He was in the ministry before I ever met him. He preached a, a prophetic message, the coming war with Russia, yeah. according to the Bible. And it had to do with Israel. That was 60 years ago. I was just getting started in the ministry, and it became so overwhelmingly accepted. I preached it in 1,800 different places in the world, and in all of Europe as well. I went to the 50 nations there and told them this message. Now, get this. You could call me a prophet because I did something that will overwhelm you at four weeks or so from now, I'm going to be preaching the message I preached 60 years ago, the coming war with Russia, where, when, why, what nations. Now, 
I just picked up the Wall Street Journal. And they said, here are the nations who will be fighting the great war ending with Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. And the nations they named were the ones. <laughs> and Dr. Vanity preached this message 60 years ago to the exact letter. And I'm telling you, tell others about it because in about four weeks I'll be announcing it. You're going to hear it. And man... Holy Spirit came and said, I want you to preach the coming of Christ and the coming of the kingdom. And that ties right in with this message as you're going to hear. It's here. And I'll tell you why. The Jews will be very happy as we continue here in a minute. Yes, and when I mention Russia and China, uh, they're so prevalent right now on uh, where they are as far as being able to have a war. China, Russia, of course, and with China, there's North Korea and Iran and Syria, all coming down to the Middle East to get what they can. You know, Israel's a very, very wealthy country, very wealthy. And they want to come down and get that wealth mm -hmm. from Israel to take a spoil and to take a prey. That's what the Bible says. Jack, you really enlightened me when you gave that message yeah. on the coming war with Russia. And it had to do with their march on Israel. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen carefully because I'm going to give you something that will shock you. You know, there are hundreds of signs in the Bible pointing to Christ's return. Amen. But they could all have happened and that would not still be the answer. For God said there had to be two special signs and we can give them to you right this moment. They're here and Jesus is about to break to the blue. Get ready. What are they? Israel becoming a nation 1948 and capturing Jerusalem 1967. Those are the final two. It's here. And now they got to get back from theirs, it's theirs, not the Palestinians. And it's ready to go. And he says, we will not know the day or hour. And so we don't set dates. But he said, when you see these two things, you'll know it's near. Hallelujah, Excel, even at the door. Amen. You'll be able to hear the knock. What's coming? The rapture. We are evacuated. All the believers, Jews and Christians who know the Lord, gone. And the living ones are taken. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54. I show you a mystery. We shall not all be dead, but we shall be raised. The corruptible, those who have gone back to dust and ashes, becoming incorruptible. The new bodies, the believers who are mortals and will sin, won't have to, because we now receive our immortality. Right. And we can never die again. We now have eternal bodies that God has given us in heaven called the rapture. And seven years later, we return. Why? To stop the coming of the battle of Armageddon, the bloodiest war in history, where the river of blood will be 200 miles long and they'll take seven months bury just the dead. Wow. But you know what? We are saved out of that terrible war. It's going to happen. Every nation that we're giving you, what just Rexella mentioned, will be involved. We will be here. God says in the book of Revelation, I will keep you from, it's the Greek word, ek, out of, hallelujah, the hour of testing which comes upon the whole world. All believers will be gone. And we're getting our new bodies there. We're going through rewards, five different rewards. And the choosing of what we will become and what we will have reign over when we return. Wow. Oh, dearly beloved Christians, I want to speak from my heart. Please listen. Get ready to meet God. Get right with God. Serve Him. Win souls. Do your tithing. 
you're going to give a count five different crowns and they have to do with these very things and some of you are going to be ashamed that's what it is some are going to hear well done the good and faithful servant and you think that's about to happen it's about to happen and the Holy Spirit when he came to me said you have been called by the Father because you know your Bible and you are a Bible student and now we're calling you God's final prophet. And you are to war in the world and tell him it's about to happen. I want you, according to God's command, to preach on the coming of Jesus soon to set up the glorious kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow. It's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen. And four weeks from now, I'll show you exactly when. Oh, Jack, that's so exciting to me. <clears throat> Did you notice that little phrase that he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus prayed that prayer when he was on earth, and it was called the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in yeah, heaven, yeah. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth, as it is in heaven. We haven't experienced that yet. But when the Lord comes back, we're going to experience it. Oh, yeah. And man, I get goose pimples on my duck bumps. <laughs> I know this book. And Jesus is going to be the ruler that the Father's appointed him. And he's the king of the kings and lord of the lords. And he rules over the Judea Christian final and eternal final and eternal new world order. And you know how much they're going to love him? Philippians 2.10 At the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the glory of God the Father. And you know why he's so honored? He died for sinners. And you folks in 4,500 fake religions who want nothing to do with Jesus will never see the other side. Why? Because this book 400 times says Jesus is the only way. 700 times it's his blood and nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash away our sins. And if you have not trusted Jesus, who's the, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, no man can come to the Father but by me, and you're not trusting in the blood of Christ for the only way of salvation, you'll never see the other side because God makes no mistakes. And the Holy Spirit who wrote this wasn't wrong 1,100 times. Uh, get ready. Get ready. And it's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Armageddon's been fought. I talked about the war. And now we come back in bodies that can never die. The corruptible body from the grave has now been changed to incorruptible. The mortal body, which can still die, has been changed to immortality. And there is no such power as the second death. Grave, yes. Second death. No. These bodies will live forever and forever and forever. And now we come back and the final battle of Armageddon in Revelation 16, 16 is gone. And we don't die. They can use bullets <laughs> and point and we can't die anymore. When God said, I'm going to give you eternal life, it doesn't begin now. We still go to the graves. Loved ones who died 2,000 years are still in graves. When they come out and get the new bodies on such the second death has no power over oh, Excella. We and I are going to be sweethearts forever oh, and forever. Amen. Man, I can hardly <laughs> wait to get to heaven. <laughs> I love this girl. That's good news, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you more about it. Now, in a few minutes from now, I'm going to tell you the greatest love story you've ever heard in closing. All right, Jack. All right, here we have <clears throat> so many things, all those headlines that we read where Israel's being threatened and, and we're going to be able to see them come out victorious about the war that Jack has been talking about. And when the Lord comes back, he will stop it all. 
Oh, how wonderful. I often try to analyze that. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, when you go to heaven, there are no wars. All it is is joy and peace and love and rejoicing and understanding things we never understood before. How wonderful heaven really is. But the best part about heaven is that we will see the Lord. And the Lord is coming back. And he's going to stop everything that's bad on earth. And he's going to establish the wonderful joys of heaven on earth. How good that is. I'm so glad that we can go into the Israeli homes right now because this program does go there. And say you will have something to look forward to. Even better than now, when the Lord comes back, your Messiah is coming back to set up peace on earth like we've never known before. And you will be the one that he loves. I want to know all about it. This is what we're talking about, friends. The Judeo-Christian eternal new world order. We're going to have a new world order. And God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to establish that, and isn't you he? you never die there. Amen. Because the kingdom is forever, forever, forever. How long is forever? It's as long as you get eternal life. And if that is forever. not eternal, we're going to lose out. That salvation didn't work. No, it's going to work. Now, let me tell you this yet. When Jesus was here, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. That's after he rose from the dead. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not to come down for the kingdom because where he is, we'll be. And he's leaving heaven to come to the kingdom. Now, I'm going to shock you. Heaven will be placed on earth. We're not going to go to heaven there anymore. Heaven is going to be here forever. Revelation 21 and 22. You know what place Christ has been preparing? It's called the Holy City. Right. And it can contain every human person who's ever lived on the face of the earth, even not unsaved, if they could get there. They can. It is 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, and 1,500 miles high, story after story after story after story. And they said, all the world so far could only live on could live on the first two floors alone. And we have oh 1,498 to go. <laughs> what a place! Heaven and earth! Now, that place he's been preparing called the Holy City. Oh, you Jewish people, you're going to really get thrilled now. Has a sign above it that says, The New Jerusalem! Oh, boy! <laughs> you Jews are going to really... If you're number 11 now, you're going to be number one for joy. That thing floats down to earth slowly and settles in the area of Jerusalem forever and forever. That 1,500-mile wide, long, and high city. Mansions for people who will never die again on such the second death hath no power. Now, I want to get yet in one more thing. How much does God love the Jew? And I'm sick of you anti-Semites. I'm sick of you guys who preach replacement theology. God threw with the Jew forever. Bunk! You guys ought to study your Bibles if you don't quit the ministry. I'm talking about 50 Protestant denominations now. Yeah, I'm finally going to go out for my own crowd. And you say, God's through with the Jew forever. And every time you come across Israel in your Bible, you change it to the church. Every time you come across Jerusalem, you change it to heaven. Where did you get that kind of nonsense? I will give Israel an everlasting name. How long is everlasting? Your religion is blown and I'm asking you folks to come go to churches like that to get your pastor to change his message or get out of the church. God's not called me to pussyfoot. I'm going to speak up with everything I've got till I die. 
And when I see false Christ and false prophets and damnable heresies and doctrines of devils in our Protestant churches, even my own denomination, I'll speak out and call the pastors by name. Amen? I don't pussyfoot. I'm not a one horse, half carrot, not need, thin spin, goose pimpled, deacon fearing, woman pleasing preacher. I got a message to preach, and nobody's going to stop me. In fact, I'm going to talk to all you guys who have death threats against me. I now have over 4,000 messages recorded, and I uh, not be afraid. Whether it's my age, because I'm up there, or a persecution and assassination for 15 of you groups have already threatened me. Hey, I got deacons and board members. Ten of them, they said, Brother, you got 4,000 messages we could put in the air after you're gone, and that's enough for 75 years. Oh, my. <laughs> we're not going to need it because Jesus is coming Amen. sooner than that. Prepare to meet your God. Amos 4.12. All right, here's the love of God for you. God looked down and he saw the Jew. And he said in Deuteronomy 7.7, and eight. I did not choose you because you are the most of people, because you were the fewest, but I chose you because I loved you, Israel. I love my Jewish people. How much, Father? Israel is the apple of my eye. Right. And I'm going to give you all the verses now. They're going to be in the book I'm writing. Israel is my fiance. What? Yeah. My betrothed. And Israel is my wife, Jeremiah three fourteen. God the Father has a wife, yeah, the Jew. And he says, I will give Israel, you guys with your baloney, replace some theology listening, I will give Israel an everlasting name. Throw your garbage out the window and get some Bible messages to preach to your people. An everlasting name. One day, the Holy Trinity, and I don't like to call them that because the cultists are saying that's a three-headed God. Wrong. That three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one Amen. eternal Godhead. And that's why the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods. That's what's wrong with the... 4,500 religions, other gods, other names. Wrong! Don't believe them. There's only one Godhead. And he said, men cannot die because their bodies are tainted with sin and the blood is polluted. Because of that sin, what are we going to do? All three of us are spirits and we're holy. We've never done thing wrong. Jesus said, I'll go. Father, I'll go. And Jesus said, yeah. And the Bible, written by the Holy Spirit, says Christ was holy, harmless, separate from sinners. Never did a thing wrong. He could point to the crowds and they say, which of you convicts me of one sin? Name it. You can't. Oh, what a Jesus. Amen. And so that brother's body was pure because he came to that virgin. And even she did not have sex. It was a miracle. And he, the Savior, the eternal spirit, was placed in that womb without sperm. Man's dated sinful sperm. And so here's the holy Jesus. And he dies. And when he raised the third day, you know what that is? It's the Father says, I'm satisfied. Ha! Ah! This holy Son has shed his holy blood. And everyone can be forgiven forever. Amen. Forever. And the Father said when he was resurrected, You did it, Son. You did it. Only one way to get saved. Jesus, I am the way, the truth. And the life, no man can come to the Father 
the one who's going to have the kingdom of God on earth. No man can come to that Father but by me. And the Father said, you're going to become my prime minister of Jerusalem. My Jesus. What? Yeah. You will be the king of the kings and lord of the lords. God bless you, son. And it's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen. In the next few weeks, I'm going to prove from the Bible that God so loves only two religions. There are only two chosen groups in the world. The Jews and the Christians. Because you could only become what you ought to be through God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that kingdom is forever and forever. And it is called the Jail Christian. Final and eternal. See the sign? New world order. Oh, how do you prepare for it? Ask Jesus. Prepare to meet your Lord. 400 times is Jesus 700 times is his blood you better believe in him because it's written 1100 times yes, Father thank you for that great love story oh Father God you love Jesus Jesus I love you too just like your father did and sent you to be the savior of the world and Jesus I've sinned We've all sinned. And I'm miserable because of my sin. Today, I want you, Jesus. I want to be saved. I want eternal life. I want to live forever in that glorious new kingdom on earth. Forever and forever and forever. Oh, Jesus. Come into my heart now. Save me. In your Holy name, I pray this. Amen, amen, and amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer with Jack. You know, I was thinking while uh, we were uh, winding this wonderful, wonderful program up, we don't have to wait until Jesus comes back to have peace. When you just open your heart to the Lord, he forgave you of your sins, and you have a peace now that you could never know before. And I love this saying that I'm going to give you right now. It's not too late to make a fresh start with God. No matter what you've done, He has forgiven you. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with Jack, please write to me. I'd love to send you a little booklet. Absolutely free. First steps in a new direction. The Lord wants to walk with you no matter what. He wants to give you this peace I was talking about, about no matter what, and how good it is to walk with the Lord in such days as we are walking right now. So let me hear from you. First steps in a new direction. Also, if you'd like to have our magazine, be glad for you to have that also. Intelligence briefing, honey. Intelligence briefing, everything going All on the in prophecies. the world. All the prophecies. That's terrific. So please write to us. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll look forward to being with you again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we. So very much. Bye-bye.